Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco. I hope you're doing well. If this is your first visit here, then welcome aboard. I hope that there's enough in this video to make you want to stick around. If you've been before, then welcome back and thank you for all the support that you've given me over the last few years. If you've been following uh, the beginner series that we've been doing of late, we, you'll realise that we've had a look at point lights, we've had a look at spotlights, we've had a look at HDRI. Well, today we're going to take a look at emissive light. So what is an emissive light? An emissive light is where we take an object or a surface within our scene and turn it into a light source. Uh, a good example of this, for instance, might be a TV screen. Uh, if you can see on screen there, we've got this TV screen in this darkish room. But with a flick of a switch, the TV turns on and the light that gets emitted from the screen is emissive light. We don't have to use a spotlight or a point light to do that. We turn the surface, the TV screen in this example, into a light source itself. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video and how to do it. Uh, over in our viewport, we can see we've got our model that we're going to be using in this video. Uh, she's all suited up in, in some action type of game. She's got a gun there, aiming at something off screen. But for all other intents and purposes, the entire scene at the moment is completely empty. I've got a little camera over there, but completely empty, as you can see. Uh, and as usual, if we come across the render settings uh, and on the environment tab, we're actually on scene only that you can see there uh, on the environment tab, which means that when we come across to NVIDIA iRay, everything is black. She's all in the dark and nothing else in the scene is lit up or providing any light whatsoever. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to add something into the scene and turn it into an emissive surface uh, and then once we've done that we're going to do something with our model and seeing what all the game is here that what she's doing with a gun pointing out but the first thing we need to do is know how to turn something into an emissive surface and to do that what i'm going to do i'm going to come up to the create menu come on down to new primitive i'm going to give that a click we're going to change the type into a sphere for this example and a diameter of one foot is perfectly fine for what I'm wanting to do here. We're going to give it a click and then we're going to select it in our scene tab up there and then just position it around to some place and some position that's a little bit more appropriate for what we want to do. So now we've got a model, we've got a sphere. If we come to NVIDIA iRay, everything is still dark and everything is still, still black because we still don't have a light source. Uh, and so to turn our sphere into an emissive light, we need it selected in the scene tab. Then we need to come down to our surfaces tab and then click on the sphere where you see it. Now we can do this two ways. We can either scroll down this or the options down here, or we can expand out the sphere in the default. And we can see there's a little section here called emission. Only one thing in there for now, and that is just something indicating that we've got the color black. It's emitting a black light. That's basically what it's saying. So if we were to change this color into something other than black, it will emit that colored light. So if we give it a click and in the color box that opens, we'll just go straight to white. We don't need to mess about with any other fancy colors and we'll click OK. Not much light in the scene, but you can see our sphere has turned to this dull gray. So what we need to do is we need to brighten things up now. As you can see now over on the emission tab out here, we've got a few more options we can play with. They're very familiar to what you'll see with spotlights or point lights. We've got the temperature of the light, how hot or cold it is, whether it's two-sided, uh, and the luminance is the main important one that we want to be working with here. It's set at the default 1500, and the luminance units are set at the default CD slash M to the power of 2. Uh, we can keep it at that or we can play around with that but for now we'll keep it as it is and all that we're going to do we're just going to increase the luminance i'm just going to add an extra zero on it and see what we get straight away we start to see now our model being lit up ever so slightly by the sphere over there if we add another zero onto that then she would be lit up perfectly adequately by this sphere uh, so much so that we can see what she's doing and see everything about her in the scene. And like any point light or spotlight, you could move the sphere around and it would change the direction from where the light is coming. 
Uh, the other controls that you see down here are exactly the same as what you'll see on other lights. The emission temperature will change the colour of the lights if we went down to 2000, for instance. It would make it a lot more of a ready light, whereas if we went up the other way to 10,000, it would create a more of a bluey white light that, that you'll find. Uh, likewise, if I just reset that back down to default, if you were to change the emission colour, let's say to a bit of a green light, it would start now to emit a green light over our model. Uh, and if we reset that back to white, we'll end up back where we started from. So just what purpose do emissives have within DAS 3D? Uh, because let's face it, if we take a look over here, what we've done there could have quite easily have been done with a, a spotlight or a point light without having to use an emissive. So why would we choose to use an emissive over a spotlight and a point light? Well, it tends to break down into two different areas. Uh, the first of those areas is what I will call supplemental light. It's, it's little lighting additions to our scene that aren't there to light the environment as such, and they're certainly not there to light the model or the characters that, that we've got in that scene. They're there to add little touches, little bits of extra light that just add a little bit of realism to our scene. So for instance, if we take a look again at the TV, at the beginning of this video or we could take the, an image of a, a, a character holding a telephone and the glow from the screen of that phone or the eyes of a cyborg you know just about to, to wreak havoc across the world uh, these are supplemental lights little lights we can add into our scene that just add a little bit that you that you just can't do with point lights and spotlights it's as simple as that and the second way that we can use emissives is as environmental lights so lights that you know light up our scene but to do so in ways that you just can't do with point lights and spotlights uh, and this is what we're going to take a look at in the second part of this video as we build a scene up around our character here using emissives to give them the bulk of our lighting in the environment and scene. We might have to use a spotlight because I wouldn't use an emissive to light a character up, but certainly we can light an environment up with emissives. And so that's what we're going to do. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn off eye rate. We don't want that on while we're at it. And we're just going to turn off that sphere because we probably don't need it anymore. If you take a look up here in the scene tab, you can see I've got something here called cube corridor. And if I expand it out, you can see I've got a cube in there and something called tubes. What these are, I've just set up some primitives, cube primitives, before the start of this video, just so we're not messing about creating, the, creating them as we go. And all that they are, if we turn on cube, for instance, is it's just a cube primitive, and I've just used the scale and tools just to stretch it out somewhat uh, and narrow it down, just to make it look somewhat like corridor as you can see there what we've got with tubes if we turn them on is up at the top on each of the the, the sides we've got these little, little elongated again they're just cubes that have been stretched out and just attached to the top of the cube as you can see there's two on either side there's one over here that white thing you can see and there's also one behind the camera and so if we were to now come back down to our perspective view and take a look and then have a look back in eye ray mode you can see that everything is black but what we're going to do is we're going to apply emissives to these tubes and what we're going to do if we come on the right one first you can just see it highlighted up there in the darkness if we come down to surface and then down to emissive we're going to change this emission color not to white this time, what we're going to do, we're going to put in an RGB value, we're going to turn it to 161, 226, oops, 226, and then the blue number up at 255, and then we're going to hit OK. And as you can see, we've now got this blue streak at the top of our scene. What we're going to do though now is we're going to actually increase the luminance of that, and I've got something pre-copied, so I get it right. We're going to turn the luminance into, what's that, 100,000, give it a click. And now we get a glowing neon light. And to replicate that to the other lights, what I'm going to do with right scene selected up in our viewport and default and emission selected down here, I'm going to right click on default. I'm going to do copy selected surface and I'm going to click on left tube, click on default and then go paste to selected surface and that'll copy the same settings over to the other light in our scene and again we'll do the same with back 
and we'll do the same with front even though we can't see it on screen at the moment so what we've done we've set up a small little corridor and we've put in there some neon lights that have got a nice little glow to them uh, and this is all done with emissives remember now look the rest of the scene isn't great like i said these can't really truly light up characters or light up scenes uh, but we can do something simple like this just to create this neon type lighting that we've got here now the next thing that we're going to do is that this corridor looks a little bit bland for what we want to do with it so up in environment here again i've got something set up which is called corridor these are just some chunks that i've taken from a package that i've got on my system there's no lights involved in them at all they're just like something to put up against the walls just to make it look a bit more sci-fi so if i turn that on you can see now we've got walls up we've got this looking more like a sci-fi uh corridor and you can see our neon light up here providing the light into our scene now another thing i'm going to do before we we finish off here is there's i mentioned earlier about supplementals how we can add extra lights into our scene uh, that not really going to light up the scene as a, as a, of itself, but we can just little things that we can add in just to make things a little bit better and a little bit more realistic. Now, if we come all the way down here in our corridor, you can see there's a little television there. Now, I've put this television in myself. It's not part of this package that you can see. So if I just one moment come out of iRay mode again, and if we click on this television, and it's just a normal television screen I've just taken from another package that I've got, and we come down into surfaces and we expand this out, we see it's got a, a surface called TV screen. And what we're able to do is to apply a texture to that TV screen, turn it into an emissive, and have it glow and give off its own little individual bit of light. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come down to base colour on the surface which is uh just the color of the texture itself and we're going to give it a click and we're going to come up to browse at the top and then i'm going to come straight to this thing this red alert sign that i've got and i'm going to just double click on there now all that we've done there we've just applied a texture like you would apply a texture or anything and if we were to come into nvidia iray we can see a very dull representation of the texture that we've got there but if we were to expand texture out and come down to emission and apply that same texture so what we're doing is we're just pressing that little down arrow apply this same texture to emissive color and then turn the emissive color to anything other than white uh, black sorry we'll go white you can see it's now got a slight glow on it and if we just increase the luminance you can see it now glowing as an emissive color so if we now scroll back all the way back to where uh, our model is you can see it now glowing in the background behind it as you can see and if we were to come over to the camera which i've been using to this which has got a little and just incidentally i just noticed that you can see the glow up here on the roof and on the walls this is all coming from this little red alert sign at the back so if we now come into the camera that i have set up you can see it in the background now because there's a bit of de depth of field in it you don't really uh you know can't really make out the details that's not the point the point is we've got this little red glow and it's probably a little too much in truth i'll just knock the luminance down a little bit uh, so we've got this little red glow in the background now our model is dark as we've mentioned earlier that environment lighting isn't really there to light up models as such uh, so what i've also got here in this very scene is a little spotlight which i've just got set off off here to her and so if i turn this spotlight on we start to get the makings of a little fun sci-fi scene all done by the neon lighting that we've got set up here and then just putting this little textured emissive on the tv screen at the back now that looks all right so that's emissive lighting uh two different ways of using it using it as environmental light that i've done with the neon up here but also a supplemental light there in the background really start implementing emissives into your scenes if you can yes they work better in in cyberpunk scenes or sci-fi scenes uh, but you can always find little places where you can drop them into your scenes to you know just increase the light type of light in the scene but also certainly with a supplemental light you know you can add little effects in there that maybe 
you wouldn't think of normally. So that is a miss of lighting. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. If so, give us a like down below. And if you've got any questions about this video or any other aspect of Daz, just drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.